Finance Committee to order, um, and I didn't see any other boards that had a quorum. Is that uh, correct? No, I think we're, I think we're uh, underway. Okay, this is probably the weather. We don't have a quorum. <laughs> okay, and uh, Chuck, I was told you were going to do say yeah, a few words first. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, uh, and and additional thank you for uh, many of you all lots, all of you uh, for coming to our lengthy meetings. Uh, really appreciated that and, and, and the questions and, and comments that were made at those meetings. Uh, and as you heard uh, the superintendent say and many school committee members, I mean, the budget uh, you see tonight, the balanced budget, uh, not a budget that anyone's happy with, but uh, trying to live within the confines of, of, of what, what we all decided as, as town leaders. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, we're op cautiously optimistic uh, with uh, you know the uh, marathon this decision we made the other night with the board of selectmen on that budget, uh, and uh, hopefully that that goes through and that will uh, go a long way uh, uh, to solving a lot of the issue the problems with the budget you'll get tonight. So again, thank you and. Uh, just let uh, Dr. Doherty open it up for you. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Um, what we are going to do this evening uh, is a little bit different from what we've done in pre previous years because you have been so active in the process. Uh, we are not going to do um, a very lengthy presentation. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to address uh, the areas that you wanted us to address with you this evening that we received um, ahead of time. And so in front of you is the school committee approved balance budget. Um, this is not the override budget. This is the balance budget. Um, there were just a few changes that were made, um, which I can get into a little bit later, from the superintendent's balance budget to the school committee approved budget. And as, as Chuck said, obviously the balance budget is not the budget that we would um, recommend or move forward in uh, if resources were more available. Um, we do recommend and obviously the um, priority reconstruction budget that was approved by the school committee last week. Um, and you know certainly if there's any questions on that we can we can address those as well. But the areas that the areas that um, my understanding also there's no sound with our CTV, so we'll, um, we'll do, this happened last week too. So, every Monday. So um, I do think though it, the taped part works, right? Okay. So live, people are just seeing us talk with no sound yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> so the areas that we received that uh, people wanted some more information on was the sustainability piece, the revolving accounts, and athletics and extracurricular. Uh, so with those are the areas we're going to focus on, and then certainly if you have any additional questions. In the school committee book, we will refer to some pages, uh, which we can talk about along the way. The first thing I want to talk about is sustainability piece. So I'm going to divide that into two categories. The first category is the balance budget. So obviously where we have had um, five years of below level service budgets, sustainability is not something that we've been able to do. And there are a lot of factors that go into sustainability. Obviously your accommodated costs, which both our town and school accommodated costs, are something that are going to affect your sustainability. Um, we did restore expenses in technology and building-based budgets for FY19. Um, those are things that in the past we, we did have to reduce. We just couldn't do them two years in a row, which is why we had to restore them for the 19 budget, because the buildings just could not take another year of, of hits, which would affect directly the classroom. So a balanced budget is 
is not a budget that we can say is has got a degree of sustainability in it. The priority plan reconstruction budget, though, however, the override budget that was approved by the school committee, um, that does have some sustainability built in. Um, you know, as, as I think has been mentioned several times by several of the boards, if an override is supported by the community in April, um, the chances of it lasting 15 years is very slim. Uh, there was a lot of factors that contributed to that. And with the amount um, that is supported, it, it is not meant to last you know, more than, than a few years. But there are some things that have been put in place by both the town and schools um, to make it a more of a sustainable budget. So as you saw last week, there are built-in costs for benefits and for, for capital. Um, in the previous override in 2003, those are things that were never accounted for. So that piece, that piece is different and that piece is obviously gonna help with the sustainability because if those pieces were not built in, that would be eating away in year two at your, uh, your operating budgets. Um, we did build into our override budget expenses. There are $300,000 worth of expenses. We did not just put in all FTEs um, because we obviously do not want in years two and three to be cutting the positions that we are recommending that we want to put into this, this budget. So we do have expenses built in um, in the form of technology, professional development, um, train, slash training, material, curriculum material, those, those areas. So, uh, we have built in expenses um, in, into the override uh, portion of the budget. And I, I think another very important piece, which is key to the proposed plan that we have put forward, is that we are trying to restructure what we're trying to do so that we are more proactive than reactive, which is why we have the curriculum coordinator leadership positions put in, that we have some additional special education leadership positions uh, in, in, in the uh, reconstruction budget, in addition to restoring teaching staff. Those are the types of things that are going to make us more proactive to be able to strengthen the curriculum that all of our students are getting, which in turn, over time, will reduce the amount of referrals we're getting for special education. So obviously that's gonna have an impact long term on our special education costs. So th there is definitely a greater uh, degree of sustainability in the override budget than there is in the, in the balance budget. So I wanted to make sure I addressed that because I know that was a, a concern that, that had come up a few times, uh, both publicly but in, the, um, in questions that we've heard from the community. John, little question, and yep. thanks, because I didn't clarify originally um, that it was really talking about the override budget, which, it, okay. I, which I know is not what we're here necessarily to discuss so much, but it's a sustainability associated with that. Could you articulate how expense, having expenses in that budget help with sustainability? Sure, so if you have just FTEs in the 2.13 $2 million, um, you don't have any anything in years two and three that you if if for some reason we our budgets are growing higher than um, the revenue that's coming in, uh, we would we would have to look back at FTEs to reduce rather than expenses. All right, so it gives you more flexibility because you don't have contractual correct on expenses. Correct. Okay. Um, and then um, what was the third item? Oh, so I watching Monday night. I, you mentioned how when you beef up your, um, I always want to say type one. Uh, uh, tier one. Tier one. Tier one. Tier one. Yes. Um, it'll decrease referrals, but you said you didn't expect necessarily a decrease in SPED costs. Over years, would you expect? No, no, I didn't. No, here's what I said. Okay, yeah. Um, I we are always going to have students okay. that require services. Yes, absolutely. And they're, because students, are going to require services for, for, for certain disabilities. What this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to do more in the general education classroom in a more inclusive setting um, because we're going to have a stronger tier one curriculum that all students are getting. So the number of referrals to see if a student is eligible for special education is going to decrease over time if you have a strong tier one instruction. It doesn't mean 
that we're not going to provide services for students that need those services. Okay. So that's what okay. I was. But that's what I was referring over to. Over a fair bit of time, you would expect. If your referrals are going down, you would have less students requiring special okay. education services. Yes. Okay. Our special ed uh, program is uh, comparable to other towns in terms of percentage of students, I think. Yes. Um, in, the, in the budget book, we have a whole demographic section. Um, we're, we're slightly below the state average for percent of students that are on individualized education plans. You want to continue? Okay. The other areas that um, I know came up were revolving accounts, so I refer you to uh, figure 41 and 42, which are on page 55 and 56. Thank you. <clears throat> so figure 41 talks about the um, revolving fund activity and status as of June 30th. And then figure 42, which is on page 58, um, is the revenue offset summary for FY18. I think one of the things that's important to understand is that in the current fiscal year, we raised fees in athletics for the kindergarten, rise, and extracurricular. We are, we're in January, so we are still collecting those fees. We're, we're through two seasons. We're actually we're in the middle of our second sports season, so we haven't even seen the spring sports season yet. Um, we've had two drama shows. We've not had the other two yet. Um, and we get monthly tuition payments for kindergarten and rise. And sometimes what happens is that families can't continue to stay in those programs and they could stop payment at that time, which means then that they're no longer in that program, whether it be full day or whether it be um, rise preschool. Um, and in athletics, there is, there is an amount of time before a student has to pay, depending on if they make the team or not. They don't automatically pay right away. So we have all of those variables. So we do not have a full year of history yet to know the impact of what this is going to be. And this is something that certainly, once we have more information, we have um, a year a year under our belt with the increased fees from this year, we'll be able to do a more thorough analysis. The other piece that I'm not sure if the Finance Committee is aware is that extended day, we did actually decrease the tuition this year. Um, we don't know the impact of that yet. Again, because this is the first year of, the, of that decreased tuition. So again, we won't know until you know, the end of this year what that will look like. And if the decrease was um, the correct amount, uh, you know, the new tuition that we're charging is the right amount um, against expenses. Sorry, and that was decreased, why? Because the, they, they felt the it was. The reason we decreased is the extended day program was the revolving account that had increasing balances each year, so the balances were getting significantly larger, so we needed to do an assessment of revenue charges and expenses being incurred. So we did a 10% reduction. We also increased the discounts for families with multiple children, and this year we've also increased the expenses to start to take into account some more of the specialized staffing that we need for special education. So we have all three of those pieces moving together that ideally will bring those balances down over time. And we're definitely hitting that account with all the expenses yes. associated with it. Oh, yeah, it's not an operating. It's actually it's a, a lot of so all of the staffing imagine. and everything goes directly to it. All of their expenses go directly yeah. to it. And we take offsets into our account as well as into the town for utilities and overhead. other expenses overhead. You could just add to that, uh, and uh, you, you're probably aware, uh, a couple of years ago, our auditors uh, looked at those accounts, and this was based on a suggestion from them that the, the uh, revolving accounts were getting too, too big, and we needed to, that was really the only way we could do it, right. was by reducing the fees. So that was, again, that was as a result of uh, a criticism, really, from, from the Lance and Heath. So. 
And we've been, over the last few years, we've been closely monitoring our offsets in these accounts, and we've had to make adjustments, and sometimes it's decreasing. The, I know last year, what's up? significant? We decreased uh, use of school properties, uh, and actually for this year, um, use of school properties in athletics, because we were concerned that we were actually going to hit a negative um, in, that, uh, in, those, in those revolving accounts. So we've made those adjustments, um, and again, we have to wait to see what the results are for this year. But um, and we, you know, we've made another decrease in the athletics, okay, um, so which I'm going to get to in a minute. Yeah, so that's two years in a row. The athletics. Well, there's a different reason why oh, we had to decrease okay. athletics this year, which I'll, I'll get into in a second. Didn't decrease uh, and for next year. I'm sorry for next did, year. Didn't decrease the fee. Decrease no, no, the, the offset. Offsets. The offset. So I don't know if you wanted me to continue, or if you had other questions about revolving. Actually, if I could borrow for a second. Thanks. On, um, on the kindergarten side of things, um, in the question and answers that you guys had, uh, question number 12, page 9, there's a discussion of, uh, let's see, the question is, what increase in FY19 full-day kindergarten tuition will fully fund both the extra teacher and the two paraeducators? In your response, your comment is you're going to review current kindergarten offset to see if we can, I guess, get half of that roughly um, through the offset. Is that we actually, as the final night of school committee, we actually the second to last night we proposed it, and the school committee approved the increase okay. to the offset for half the teacher and half of the Paris. So that change is made within the documents that you have. Cool. Thank you. Can we continue? Yes. So now move to athletics, which is figure 32 and 34. Figure 32 is page 48. Figure 34 is page 50. So I'll start with figure 32. This is the athletic program budget by detail. Um, Budget is a 7.4% increase, but the bulk of that increase is because we decreased the offset. So if you notice where it says revolving fund support, it went from the current number, which is 366,900, to the requested, F requested budget FY19, 316,900, which is a 13% decrease. When you decrease the offset, you ex it means more is coming out of the operating budget itself. Um, so that's the bulk of that 7.4% increase. If you take a look at the salaries, user fees make up, they fund 76% of all the contractual coaches' salaries. So the, that's, that's the line item that um, we use for the, for the offset. So 76% of the coaches' salaries are funded through user fees. Um, if you notice all the way down to the bottom line, second from the bottom line, expenses decreased 11.8%. So we did everything we could um, to minimize expenses um, in this athletic budget. It's really the decrease in the offset that's causing this, this increase. Um, now, why, why are we decreasing the offset? We're decreasing the offset due to the anticipated, uh, it's really a combination of things. One is we do have an increase in the number of students who are on free and reduced lunch. And the second reason is that the family cap was not increased last year. That was a school committee decision when we increased the user fee last year for athletics. So it's a combination of those two things. And Mrs. Dow did an analysis at one of the school committee meetings. And we're, we're pretty spot on with this at, at this point. In the in with the two seasons, we're pretty spot on with that fifty thousand um, dollar decrease. Being accurate. Being accurate, yes. Can, can I? So just add to that too. I mean, we uh, one of the school, <coughs> school committee uh, guiding principles this year was to stop using gimmicks and stuff to balance the budget. And in that year where it went up. Uh, you know, based on some guidance, we probably use more of an offset than we should have. That and now, 
it's 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 come to roost really i mean this this we got to correct that and that goes back along to the same lines on the uh extended day we just got to be more judicious on on how we use the offsets yeah because it ends up being such a big swinger yeah it really right. hurts and again last year i think it was 275 or something and, you know I, I always make the analogy it's kind of like free cash that if you use too much that's the base you start with, with the following year mm -hmm. and then if you see a dip in participation double whammy. it's a double whammy right yeah Sorry, but was there ever any discussion? I was at the meeting, so I don't think I heard discussion about raising the family cap. I know you wouldn't want to raise fees two years in a row, but was there ever thought this year to raise the family cap? No. There was not any discussion by doing that, but it would not have a major impact. So we think it was mostly... No, it, it would have some impact, but it's not, it's not right. going to yeah, bring in thousands of dollars. Yeah, we... we had some conversations you know anecdotally about it offline but it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that no. it, maybe you know ten twenty thousand yeah dollars. It's, a, it's a combination of the two that's causing the decreases the free and reduced and the family cap is why we're saying we reduced it so and again the other thought and is some of the adjustment too is it really it's part, it was part of the adjustment but the thought is we actually raised all of the fees across the board last year so to go back again and raise the family cap would be another increase yeah to virtually almost all the families participating so but do we think the revenue will be 50,000 less or we just are still balancing that we're still offset. balancing that out we we only had part of the year and right now it's at about 29 30 thousand and we know where we still have the rest of the oh. seasons to go through so that's why we said yeah. 50 is probably pretty close to where it'll be and most families don't hit the cap until the end until the spring so there's probably right. a good chunk of people that will hit it in the upcoming seasons one um, suggestion maybe that would, would help this out this the whole <coughs> revolving funds and offset thing is a disaster in terms of ease of understanding <laughs> and I'm wondering if it would be possible to separate expenses from sources of of, uh, of payment in other words the revolving fund support is kind of right smack dab in the middle of the page on figure 32 page 48 oh, I'm wondering if there's a way to, to either separate that better or go through what the expenses are and say, okay, here's how they're funded. And the revolving fund covers a lot of the salaries to the tune of you know, mm -hmm. X. And we could add that, I think, in the paragraphs below. The reason we do it this way is, for our purposes, ease of reporting. So this is sort of the DESI coding where we re we have to roll it up in these this fashion to report that way. I think we could annotate it and add some additional comments. Yeah, that would be great because, I mean, so so it's, it's it'd be great to see what the total cost of the program is mm -hmm. and then to talk about how it's getting funded. Mm -hmm. um, and he, in this structure, I know it's DESI, but you, can, you don't see it. Right, we can, we can look at that for yep. when we do the budget going forward. But so can I? So, the, I guess the only danger with that is, isn't it only supporting the things that are above it? So, yeah. if you put it below at the bottom, you want it at the bottom line. Uh, so it's it's not it's not supporting those. Uh, it's supporting items. the coaches' salaries. It's it's right. That's why it's that's why right. it's Netted. that's why it's where the salaries are. Right. Understood. But this gives you kind of how you're paying for things it doesn't give you what the total costs are you have to go through and add back and and do different things it's kind of it's strange to have costs and revenues kind of put together in one chart that, but, uh, i wouldn't necessarily say those are the, the revenues that's well, the funding, offset we're of taking funding. from the and again yeah. it's I, 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 i'm working this too hard i think the, the point is that when you say to somebody we're decreasing the offset it, it's speaking two foreign languages that, that people don't understand. It'd be much clearer and easier to just see it. Okay, here's what's happening. Here are the numbers, here are the expenses, and now specific to the coaches' salaries, you know, this is what this revolving fund is used for. And so of those salaries, which are X, here's how much of it's covered by the revolving fund. Yeah, we can, I think that'd just be a straightforward. We can look 
forward, I would say, as we go through this process next year for different ways to present it. Thank you. Sorry, for clarification, the, the, when booster groups pay for coaches, that's not even on here, right? If the or way that it? that would work is if, a, if an organization does a donation, it goes in and out of the revolving account. So if they yeah, give so us a donation, it's not reflected. The expense is not here. Right. The offset is not here. So That's again, the cost of the programs aren't really reflective here because the boosters there, pay a lot. Exactly. There is yeah. a, a good amount that goes that comes in via donations for both athletics and extracurriculars. Right, that the parents are already paying for. But it just, just so you know, the contractual coaching positions yes. are funded in here. A lot of here. groups choose to get it. Right, these are additional coaches that are not... Coaches. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that um, given available resources, there was no way to slice this budget in a way that didn't directly and negatively impact student learning. Um, on the and I and I wish we were here to consider the the reconstructed override budget, and I hope that you know there's clearly very much the need for that. Um, I was wondering um, about about process for considering different ways to to slice it. Um, I noticed that on the last night of of the school committee's budget deliberations, one of the members came forward with a alternative proposal that the committee seemed to feel didn't there wasn't time to consider based on the the vote schedule. So I was just wondering from a process standpoint, is there generally an expectation that alternative proposals be brought forward by a certain time or an opportunity for things to be considered past the scheduled vote. Um, how how is that usually handled? So uh, thank you. Uh, we uh, I think made made comment at the meeting prior to the vote meeting that there was any. Thing, uh, you know to get it to us uh, by by a certain time time, mm -hmm. time frame okay. uh, and uh, we did get uh, part of that proposal mm -hmm. that you're referring to mm -hmm. there was a second component of that that came that up came up that, that night up. and mm -hmm. it was a significant uh, uh, reduction in in athletics that yes right no right. one could sit there that. and really draw value judgments on without right. having uh, seen it and reflected mm -hmm. in terms of delaying the vote uh, uh, we had set aside uh, that Tuesday the the next night uh, but not all the committee members could be there that night so uh, it was important uh, that uh, we voted that night on on the budget okay and uh you know that that committee member was comfortable with that mm -hmm. okay thank you want to continue so the other question that came up i believe was extracurricular <coughs> so extracurricular um that's page 50 get 34 <clears throat> we did address this um, this is one of the, the changes that was made between um, the original balance budget and the what the school committee voted on so you'll notice um, what seemed to get a lot of discussion was the stipend line stipend line is a nine thousand four hundred fifty six dollar increase it was I believe at nineteen thousand four hundred fifty six dollars and then we did reduce that um, to fund that uh, along with the kindergarten increase in the offset to fund the uh, elementary teacher so this was based more on historical to come up with this number um, on the number of shows uh, in the type of shows that happen in a year. So there, was always, there were always four shows. Some years there was one musical, some years there's two musicals. And the shows are done on a four-year cycle continuum so that when a student is in drama, they have the opportunity to do so many musicals over their four-year career. 
So next year would be a year that there would be two musicals normally. So that's what is being reflected in this budget, is that when you have musicals, there tend to be more expenses and greater number of stipends because you now need a choreographer, you need um, other, other uh, stipended positions to do that. So what is reflected here, which is a $9,456 increase of those additional stipends to run a musical. The rest of the expenses you'll notice are all zeros for the most part. Um, so this extracurricular budget, which is a very small budget to begin with, um, you know, is reflected there. So and it's more if, consistent with actuals too, right? Yes. Or why was the actual of 17 so high? Correct. It's the Co two musicals in yeah. 17. 17 was the two musicals. Oh, so every other year. It's every other year, right. Do they bring in more revenue for musicals? Musicals tend to bring in a little bit more revenue, in theory, yes. Not anything to Yeah, the, usually the two winner shows have the least amount of uh, revenue yeah. to ticket sales, because mm -hmm. uh, those are non-musicals, and your fall, your fall musical is usually your biggest one, and then if there's a spring musical, that, that is also tends to bring a little bit more revenue in for ticket sales. Do ticket sales go to the boost check? The, the ticket sales go into the revolving account as well. That does help support the offsets. But the other piece to keep in mind is that the direct costs of running the productions also go into the they go in and out of the revolving account. So if you run a musical, there are more expenses. So the ticket sales come in, but the expenses to run the show are also higher. And those so that go that in out and out, and the stipends are still. Yeah. Those were the areas that we were asked to comment on. Anybody else have any other questions? Uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I we need to <laughs> couple of questions. Um, I saw Joe in the background. Hi, Joe. <laughs> um, I was going to save this for tomorrow night, but um, one of the things I'm just trying to get a better understanding of is that in the energy expenses, actually in 2018, for school buildings, it went up a lot in the budget. And that was the baseline that was used for 19. And I, I know I've asked you this, and I just, I'm having trouble getting comfortable. So the electricity budget, 17 was like $530,000. I don't mean to interrupt, but I, this is actually a town core, not a school facility item, so I'm not right. sure if it's more appropriate to be dis discussing it as part of the overall town budget as opposed to it's actually not part of the school budget. I'm okay with that. I just saw Joe in the background. I wasn't expecting that. that was, <laughs> we knew originally there had been some school facility questions when we did the original budget, so he was kind enough to agree to come this evening in case there were any school <laughs> facilities related items that we were not able to answer on his So as, as prep behalf. for tomorrow night, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just trying to get comfortable with that. I'm, 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 I'm sure you'll have an answer for me tomorrow night, but I'm, just, I'm stuck on it. <laughs> um, so that was one. Two, um, in the reconstruction budget is the there was a discussion of an enrollment study that's in the questions a couple of times. Is that something that's considered in the reconstruction budget? No, there is no funding put aside for expenses for an enrollment study. Our enrollment essentially stayed around the same for the last several years. Um, because Reading has built out from a housing standpoint, you have a lot of, you know, new homeowners come in and people who are leaving, so the, you have a lot of that. But, you know, it, it, it's fluctuated 1% up, 1% down over the last several years. So we've not seen the need to do an enrollment study. Yeah, I think the flip side of that would be that the population of the town is actually, uh, if all these projects go through, it's gonna be going up um, in total. Yep. Um, it has, to some extent, it's gonna go up more. Um, and just would wanna make sure that we have an idea of what's coming. I know that's come up in a couple of questions. Um, third one, which is kind of a, a, a start of a discussion for tonight, but actually for tomorrow night and beyond, um, is our CASA. So, yeah, I'll save most of this for tomorrow night, but 
<laughs> what is this you. preview night? <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, I'm sure the town manager is listening to all your questions for, for, on TV. <laughs> I'm, Although I'm we sure can't hear it. Yes. <laughs> I think that the town's going to have to think about our CASA for fiscal 20 and beyond and what budget that's going to come from. You know, is it the school? Is it the town? Uh, I might even make an argument that it's a community priority. But I think it's not something we want to ignore until fiscal 20. I think we want to be thinking about it. Um, I was kind of hopeful it would be part of the override discussion. It wasn't specifically. But I wanted to raise it because I think it's important to the schools. I think it's important to the town. Um, and as we're sharing all the information about capital and debt that are coming down the road over the course of the next five to ten years. It could include buildings, could include a lot of things. The cost of our casa is another thing that needs to be in there that right now is kind of hidden. And I just want to bring it up, um, again, just for discussion a little bit tonight, but for the future and tomorrow night, um, Bob, I'm sure we'll talk about it. <laughs> um, one more question. Um, in the reconstruction budget, um, does the superintendent get his cost of living increase or raise? Is that part of the reconstruction budget? Is that considered in there? Uh, no, it's not in there. It's not in there. So at some point that needs to come home to roost. Um, I would wonder why, why we wouldn't do that in the reconstruction budget. Mark, I know as part of the other question that you had raised on the utilities, you had also alluded to the use of school property and rental revenue. I can address that one tonight. So okay. if we look at historical costs for utilities over the last three years, they've actually been trending consistent. We haven't seen a spike in the actual. So I would not propose that we increase user fees that we're charging outside groups based on budgeted utility costs. I think that could end up in a tricky situation if the actuals do not necessarily come in where they're budgeted. We usually use a lag for some of those items. So I have not built in increases to rental rates for next year based upon the budget. And also there were some questions that came up about utilization of the buildings. Not every time the buildings are occupied do we receive revenue so a few examples a lot of the meetings we've been having lately have been held up here so yes we are running electricity heat custodial help for all of the various school committees selectmen finance committee those are not revenue generating as much as i would love to give you a bill i don't think i actually can um so salary and if to the extent meetings yes if you'd like to donate we would be happy to accept it so to the extent items run past a certain hour based upon contractual obligations we actually are required to pay overtime so if a meeting goes past 11 we are paying hours of overtime to custodians to be here and those are not revenue generating so while we did mention that utilization is up, it does not equate to revenue being up. And again, I would caution using budgeted items to build rates. We, we do look at historical to say what are the average historical rates for energy costs to look at our structures. All right. So this is a little awkward because we're not going to talk about the cost side. I am talking about the cost side from a historical aspect to say when I look at my rental rates, I would look at 15, 16, 17 actual utility costs because that's the information I have and that's actual right. known items that I would say I would look at that when I'm looking at my rental rates. So those are flat as a pancake. Yep, so I would not expect to see revenue increase on flat as a pancake <laughs> expenses. <laughs> right, budgeted expenses are up 20%, so Which, there's a mismatch somewhere. We have to figure out what that is. Okay, thank you. Uh, one, one question on the technology side. You mentioned moving from an eight-year cycle to a five-year cycle. Mm -hmm. That's not in one year, I would imagine. I was looking at the list of equipment and stuff like that, and it doesn't look like you can replace the oldest uh, equipment in one year. That, that is true, but it will get us, you move that it will yeah. continue to move yeah. that needle towards the five-year, yeah. yes. Yeah. There's some pretty ancient stuff here, but... Uh. Yeah. <laughs> 
The the other piece, um, I, are you, which are you referring to the reconstruction budget? Because um, that's that's I'm what I'm the, looking at the inventory in the regular budget. Oh, okay, okay. Because another factor that's coming up next year that we need to be aware of is that the high school is now going to online state testing. They're the only level that hasn't done it yet. Um, K to eight, uh, K to eight, three to eight is doing online testing. Next year, the high school now comes on board, so we are going to have to. Um, do some replacement of our labs up here at the high school next year. And then actually, it looks like they have some of the older equipment too. Yes. Um, not quite at the five year level, but soon to be. And I don't want Joe's time to be wasted since he came tonight. But can you articulate? I know I asked during your regular meeting because we had an increase on the contractual, high school contractual cleaning services, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So last year we had an $80,000 decrease. Can you sort of go through that story again? Of like how, how do we have a 80000 less last year and this year we had a big increase? So we had worked with the cleaning contract last year when we were building the budget. Yep. Building the budget and we came to an agreement with them. We're not able to sustain that this year. We are... We did propose cutting two cleanings next year, so that's how we were able to reduce the cost next year, but we're not able to go back and do the same level of decrease next year that we did this year. So even last year, it was really sort of a contractual kind of agreement. Yep. And they, so they had to somewhat agree to it. Yes, they did. And the, the risk is, is if we said, we would go out and rebid it. We know we are pretty certain that we would actually have a significant increase over where we are, even with the reductions next year. So we do have to rebid year, it re next year. year then? Mm -hmm. Next year's the third year of the contract. So third year, but we'll be rebidding for in a year. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Public questions. Any uh, yeah, any questions from the audience? <coughs> um, well, the microphone. Dad, does that really add? Well, I don't know. I don't. But we, yes, because it's being recorded. Okay. So the the recording is the, working. The little the little microphone is the one you need to speak into. Okay, thank you. Uh, I was wondering if there is any possible way to put a meeting on to discuss proposals to save those teacher positions. I've written to all of you before uh, because the balanced budget, everyone admits, is bad for students. And I just, uh, I'm, I truly believe that where there's a will, there's a way. And uh, I feel like uh, canceling a meeting where we would have had time to discuss it okay so let's schedule another one is there some way is there, or is there something the Finance Committee can do to float the school budget until we find a better solution uh, before all these teachers leave our district because rebuilding a program from scratch is a lot harder everyone thinks well if the override passes then everything will be great no it won't we will have to rebuild and replace all the dedicated teachers who leave our district and who know how to teach the curriculum and also at a time when scores are falling and uh, more and more students are struggling with reading we have a high percentage of students not even meeting expectations in English to propose to drop the second English I I just can't understand uh, there has to be another way uh, also I don't understand when athletics and extracurriculars became an untouchable part of the regular education budget so that we transfer funds from there last June and uh, so that we can't consider raising fees for expensive sports and I am a swim parent it would affect me I have drama kids do that they're just I know these are not ideal solutions but uh, it, we also need to be thinking along these lines because two-thirds of the town voted against the override last time two-thirds of those who voted and it's possible that this could happen again and in the meantime we cannot keep threatening our teacher positions every year and uh, and 
keep I, I and keep with our mission which is education so I just I, I implore you to find a way to make this work and and save this important program I can tell you as a as someone who has been a college interviewer AP foreign language matters uh, I have definitely interviewed kids who have not done sports but I have not interviewed kids who have not been taking challenging classes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll speak a little to it just because, um, and I understand no one liked going into this year. This was no surprise and it was not a budget that the school administration or the school committee was proud of. But in terms of floating them, this is what we were up against last year, and I feel like we went through that float year and did some, you know, really crazy bending to make that happen. So last year was that float year, and to try and do something financially irresponsible to cover it is just kicking it down the road. Some Something's got to change, and that's really why the selectmen did the right thing, put the override on the ballot. Short of that, we're just not being accurate with what it costs to run a town and an education system. But now the override is on the ballot, so <coughs> given that, can't we do something to try and save the teachers right now? Because if the override passes, then they're still going to leave. Who do you think will, will stick around? But that's what was done last year. We have to we have to be financially disciplined at this point. It's not easy, but from a financial position, that's what we've got to do. And it, I think we were to your point, Paula. We were very clear and open about that last year. That you know, without an override, those changes that we made last year were not sustainable. That was a one time and there was a lot of serious discussion that went into that. That was not that was not a decision that was taken lightly. Um, you know while I certainly agree that these are important positions, these, you know, in my opinion need to happen. I you know if to make my comments clear, I'll separate from the Finance Committee for a moment, fully support and yes we need the override. That needs to happen. However the comment was made that at some point athletics and extracurricular activities became untouchable and I, I would strongly disagree with that comment. We heard that uh, two, two games for each team are being cut. There are cuts across other extracurricular activities so I don't like to see any of those cuts but I think we do need to keep in mind that cuts have been made from everywhere. It's not, uh, there isn't, as far as I'm concerned and someone speak up if you feel differently, there's no part of it that's been untouchable. Why no surcharges for expensive sports for ice and swim? I think the difference has been looked at and would be minimal. But correct me if I'm wrong. That is correct. Way I understood. That is correct. And we're looking, well, just to fund the teachers, it's an additional 700,000, I think. Uh, the, the middle school piece is about 450,000. 450, and then, yep. yeah. So there's nothing in the Not budget that user can fees. do that without other draconian cuts someplace else. So that's. Um, 415,000? 50, 150,000. No, I, I heard you. Um, 415,000 was transferred out of the regular education budget. Uh, last June at the school committee meeting, that's a combination of reduction in offsets and uh, if my math is right. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to know, did no one know that the budget was serious, even though we had just barely saved middle school positions last year? Why was it okay to transfer money out of regular education when we could have used that to float those teachers until the override? I, I want to uh, just comment on a couple things. One is the 415,000 that you keep referring to, and I've seen it in emails, is not accurate. Okay. So I'm not sure where you got that number from, but we don't have the exact number right now, but that is not an accurate number. It wasn't even near that much that was transferred to athletics. It was, it was under $50,000. Um, so I just want to make sure we, we clarify that. Um, you can't take money from one fiscal year and float it to the next fiscal year. We're not allowed to do that. Can you return it to the town? It, 
it you does go back to the town. Return to the town becomes part of free cash. Right. And then and there would be free cash available maybe to and, and we took 1.2 million yeah. out of free cash. We use free cash every year. This, this year's budget. So I am personally very distressed about the um, the loss of the potential loss if the override doesn't pass of the middle school foreign language program and the sixth grade and half of sixth grade English language arts. I think you know I think about the middle school model. I think about um, the delivery of foreign language through the high school years. And I you know personally I was a Spanish major, started seventh grade Spanish and think about all the wonderful opportunities I had um, as a result of that experience and how it enhanced my life in, in, immer in immeasurable ways. Um, I think from a financial, a financial responsibility standpoint, I don't think that the Finance Committee um, is prepared to float those positions. I, you know, I think a question as to whether um, the school committee feels comfortable reopening the question is I think that's up to the school committee um, it sounds like that they they felt that um, they needed to take the vote when they took the vote I, um, but I think that's probably a question better put to them I think the last year the finance committee um, worked with the school committee and the town manager to um, come up with a cogent path forward to save those positions for one year but it was it was um, made clear at that time that it was a one-year fix that we weren't going to be able to replicate another year um, through uh, incredible creativity although I do believe that um, both the town and school sides use incredible creativity to um, to serve our town and schools uh, to the best of their ability. Uh, in terms of whether there's a way to slice and dice and, and take pain in other areas, I think that's um, a question for the school committee. So, not to put you on the spot, Chuck, no, but I think no. I put you on the spot, Chuck. Uh, so, we, we voted, as you know, uh, five to one uh, to for, for the balanced budget that you see tonight, uh, I don't uh, I don't see anything. Uh, I'd like to, but I don't see anything that that would change that vote. Uh, you know, we have to live by. Uh, we, we're living within the parameters of when this budget had to come to the finance committee as well, for charter reasons. We can't just stretch this out for weeks and have meetings. It had to be to the town manager by uh, last, it was, last a, it was a 20. So we can't just thing. keep having meetings to discuss it. We had, I think almost, uh, it, was, it was better than an hour and a half discussion on the alternatives that were presented. Uh, you, I mean, that's, that's all part of public record and, and uh, and before a vote was taken, so it wasn't taken uh, real quick. It was a lot of discussion and a lot of dialogue about it. No one was happy uh, with with the result, but uh, that's uh, the vote we we have, and we got to live with and 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 do our best to to advocate for for the override at this point. Just to, to kind of reiterate that a little bit, there is only one solution that is sustainable, and that is to change the revenue base to hit something of that magnitude. It's in the you know, four or five hundred thousand or higher. Even if there was a way to float it for a year, we run into the same thing that we did this past year. There, there aren't sufficient revenues in the town from Prop 2.5 and, and from the growth that's coming in to sustain the programs that the town expects, the school system as well as the town. It's unfortunate, but that's exactly where we are. But let me just um, clarify, I'm not suggesting this to replace an override. Mm -hmm. I'm suggesting that this be done in addition to putting the override on the ballot. And I actually think that to save these teachers will actually help the override cause. Because uh, there were a lot of concerns expressed in the override survey about priorities for spending, how our money is spent. Uh, and uh, and a lot of trust, mistrust, and 
you really go a long way to restore that if you said this is so important and so integral to our core mission that we're going to find a way. And if that means adding another meeting to discuss St. Foyman's proposal, because one of the reasons that um, it was not considered further was because somebody said there needs to be a time for athletic parents to rebut or discuss. So could we add another meeting? I truly believe that we can do better. Uh, finance committee, can you postpone for one week or whatever to allow a meeting to be held? Can we get to yes somehow? I think, I'm not speaking for the committee, that's exactly what we're trying to do, is to get to yes and to figure out what's, what's the best way to do that. I, I understand your point in terms of, you know, is there a way to, to promise $400,000 out of the town budget? Um, that's higher, I think, than anything we've ever considered, ever. Well, can you do it last year? No. 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 We put an additional 100000 in. 100 That was how far off balance it was last year. It was a combination of things. And it was a combination of things that, that was $100,000 for free cash. It was some changes that the town manager offered in, in his coaching plan for. It wasn't it the building budgets? If, if I can comment on that. Yeah. Oh, that was all on the burden of the school department budget except for the 100000 That's correct. What it did is it created a bigger hole for FY19. So the reason why we had to cut more in 19 was because of what we did in 18 to save those teachers. All it did was move the problem to the next fiscal year. It just creates a higher cliff. I mean, the, the fundamental problem is we've got to bring in additional revenue, period. The yeah. cliff gets higher and higher the more you kick it down the road. No, I, I understand about the override. I'm just saying it seems silly to lose all these dedicated, experienced teachers who are going to leave. I know families looking at private school now because they are not expected and they're not sure that their children will have foreign language in middle school. And if there's something you can do to tie things over, so the so so what happened last year was a dialogue that was started at in this room by the school committee okay and then it it, it escalated when the town manager got involved and you know we uh, decided not to do that this year we can't it wouldn't have been play acting in good faith to do that this year uh, we 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 got that last year with the understanding that we were going to uh, go go for an override uh, this this spring uh, and so it, it would have it would be disingenuous on the school committees to come to to this board to ask for more free cash to uh, float us I mean I understand what you're asking we asked for that last year we got it through several uh, mechanisms last year it would be disingenuous for us to ask for that again this year as one finance committee member and I don't think I'm necessarily speaking for the entire board I I would be comfortable with the board postponing its vote by a week but if if I if I heard the school committee say that they um, wanted to consider or reopen the question um, and that that could lead to a different result although I'm not hearing that so I'm not hearing that right <laughs> I mean the, the entire school committee isn't here but I right. I can right. speak for the school committee to the extent that they heard this mm -hmm. budget uh, dialogue for as I said over an hour over an hour mm -hmm. and the what voted a budget five to one uh, there I don't see anything uh, com more co anything compelling that would change that vote at this okay. point thank you I did hear from you in your meetings in the last month or so you know it's also important to have the different groups get equal cuts in the high school and elementary schools have been significantly impacted in the last few years and because of the way the middle school model works you have to go at it in a big chunk and so talk about being kept sacred the middle school has been kept sacred for the last few years when high school and elementary have been cut so 
it hurts because it looks so dramatic because it has to be done in chunk because the way the middle school model works, but middle school was kept sacred while high school and elementary were, were hit. So this would be another very significant hit to the high school. And I know that was one of the overriding goals to make it equal. Linda? I also just wanted Linda Snowdoxer, speaking for myself, but also as a school committee member, we've received letters to this. We've listened to teachers. We really know that this budget is not what we want to do for the students, but that's why we need to go ahead. So what Mrs. Lieberman, I know her heart, I know your heart is in this, but it's it's been considered, it's been part of our consideration all along that we don't want to do this, but we have to do this. And so this would not be a new piece of information to be considered and revoted on by the school committee. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, this is the reality we're faced with. And so to create a real solution my opinion as a citizen is we need to vote yes on the override and it would be best if people turned their energies towards that going forward. Thank you. Uh, Carl McFadden, 33 Wakefield Street. I apologize, it's somewhat maybe off topic, but not really. Um, I spoke last a week ago Tuesday about RMLD, and I know people are going to be like, oh, here he goes again. Um, since then, I, I was able to get some information from the, from the town. Uh, two numbers, 14,000 and 10,000. 14,000 was the amount of increase from last year to this year that the R RMLD gave towards the town. 10,000 was how much they gave the raise to the general manager. And I'm not saying anything in reference to her, okay? They made $5 million last year. They gave us $14,000. Their net assets are $109 million. You sell everything in terms of the, if a liquidation, we would pick up $109 million. It's embarrassing that people are arguing whether or not we gotta cut sports from kids up in high school, which I'm a big sports advocate, most of you guys may know. I figured that's why you were here. Yeah, you would think so, right? But I'm not. Uh, I'm here for every kid and every policeman. I mean, we saw what happened tragically Friday, uh, Saturday night with what one of our police officers had to go through and it will be going through for years to come. It is, I'm, in, I'm asking, I don't know if it's the FinCon's in charge of it or the selectmen, enough's enough. Okay. I would, right now, you know, everyone asks what's the odds of the override passing. It's a coin flip to be honest with you, because there's a lot of people that would love to vote for an override, but can't. But we own an asset that's worth $109 million. Just on that, forget the fact that they have a monopoly for the next 20 years, which any of you guys in finance know, that's worth a lot of money. But the fact of the matter is, I do represent the town on the Burbank Ice Arena. The Ice Arena turned back to the town $104,000. Mr. Burbank, when he planned it out, did a pretty good job. We turned up back $104,000, and RMLD made $5 million and increased the contribution to the town, of which we own, $14,000. That's outrageous. Uh, actually, I'm quoting some, some of the people from um, different organizations that have sent me emails and spoken to me saying, outrageous is the word that's there. So I don't know if it's the selectmen, I don't know if it's FinCom, but enough's enough. I know it's, people say, oh, it's a utility, it's complicated, the whole nine yards. There's a lot of things in life that are complicated. But if there's a will, there's a way. Our children, our police, our fire, our DPW deserve that. And I'm not blaming anyone in place. The agreement was, I don't know, it's probably been in place for 25, 30 years. Well, everything in life, get, you know, we evaluate things. I think it's just time to do it, okay? I, I, I was watching at home when the RCTV connection was working, which was great. I appreciate them doing that. And I, I'm listening to a lady um, who was making a, a presentation eloquently talking about advanced placement for college evaluating kids. Every kid should have every single opportunity he or she deserves to have when we can afford it. 
we have an asset that can afford us to have every single thing that we really do want. And all it does is require leadership to take the stand and say, enough's enough, our children, our townspeople deserve that. So I hope someone will be able to do there. I know I've spoke, so I'm probably blue in the face of the selectmen to take the lead. I believe they are next Tuesday, I believe, February 13th. We're listening. We're the listening, I know. Um, RMLD is reevaluating that. Mr. Pacino has um, set up a meeting for that. I would love to have a whole bunch of people show up and say, you know what, I'm sure the gentleman is very good, show what she does, whether she got a raise and she's making what she's making. But I think there's so many kids and so many police, so many fire that deserve just as much. So I just implore people to you know, encourage the selectmen or FinCom or whomever it is to sit there and say, you know what, you made $5 million. And one of the things we do at, our, uh, at the ice arena, we make sure we have a stabilization fund so that if the roof leaks or whatever the case may be, anything left over goes to the town. That's a crazy concept. You own something, you have enough in your uh, rainy day fund, then the rest goes to the town. And if other towns don't like it, that's okay. They can buy the, they can buy it off us too. That's my overall philosophy. I'm sorry, but it just gets tiring. You guys are working so hard, and we're getting crumbs, mm -hmm. and we're seeing an asset that we own that literally 109 million. Uh, that's a, that's a lot of money in my book. So, uh, I guess I'm I'm done, going on and on and on. But it just gets tiring because I'm listening to, you know, kids in there literally saying to me, I think I'm going to go to Austin Prep or St. John's Prep or Brooks, because, you know. Things are being taken away from me. And as a townie, it bothers me because I went to school here and kids used to take a lot of pride in the people who took a lot of pride in the community. And now they're sitting there going, you know, there's, there's scraps left and it's unnecessary. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming out in the terrible weather. Thanks. I think Barry had his hand up first. Thanks, Mr. Chair, Barry Berman, member of the Board of Selectmen, and, and, and John, if I miss something, please um, jump in. Uh, a couple of things. Um, Carl, you're right. Um, we need to look at that, and we are. If you, if you recall, town meeting last, uh, last year passed um, uh, a resolution to basically ask the selectmen to go back to RMLD and review um, the schedule by which they give us a dividend. Um, unfortunately, the, well, depending, depending upon depending upon um, where we are in the economic cycle, there was a time where that, that agreement was actually good because it's pegged to the cost, it's pegged to the CPI. When CPI was four, five, six, seven percent, you know, back in the day when it was done, they actually, the increases were good. Now the CPI is, is flat to zero, which is why Carl's right, our increase is about 10, 15, uh, I take your word, for, yeah, uh, 1,000 a year. Um, we do get a dividend um, from RMLD. It's a, uh, I, you have it in front, I forget off the top of my head, but it's close to $2 million a year that, 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 that they send back to the town. So it's not, it's not like we have this asset that's making tons of money, they don't give anything back. And we get $2.3 million a year. The question is, you know, our costs are going up more than the CPI. So that needs to get looked at. And, and the town manager and selectman uh, Ensminger are actually meeting next week. They've opened that up. And, um, you know, we are on it. So um, we'd like to renegotiate that deal or at least figure out a way. Um, I don't want to talk about all the details, but at least to basically, um, you know, get a better deal for the town of Reading, essentially. So. John Arena, Chair of Board of Selectmen. Um, as, as Barry and Carl both said, this was a topic that uh, was raised at our April town meeting and a commitment was made to work through it. I think, although effort's been put into it, it's, been, it's a bit stalled. Dan Ensminger, one of our members, will, will work through that. But I think Carl's right. This is an asset we own. It's as if you had, it's a little difficult because it's a public utility and it's other towns. But um, I think the time is, is right to go back and, and work on this much harder and much more um, expeditiously. This, we're in a unique position of having this asset. Few, few of these public utilities like this, few towns have them. Um, this could be a substantial boost uh, to town finances if done properly. And uh, I'll, I'll leave, leave it at that. Uh, Dan and the board will will meet next week to talk about this 
or Dan and uh, our town manager will, uh, we may actually have quorum for that meeting. Um, I had a completely different question on the matter of offsets and revolving funds. Uh, picking up where Mark Doxer said, remembering that people that read the budget generally aren't financial people. It's always, um, so I'm always reminded by <coughs> folks who say, what does this mean, what does that mean? And I have two suggestions. One is, at the end of the day, the offset in a, in a, in a budget is just an expense back to the um, operating fund. It's a draw off of funds to go pay for some offset in, I'm using the word to define itself, to pay for funds, to pay for costs that actually are incurred by the organization. It might be useful to show that as just another expense. You can use the word offset, but actually call it an expense line, because that's what it is. And then the second point is, it would be really helpful to have a little scratch pad. I'm not trying to create work, but what is the, to the extent that you can charge actual costs, do we actually have an assessment of what the 100% actual cost level is? And I'm not suggesting we go to that level, but it's a useful bellwether just to say that's the maximum amount. We're at, we're at and here's the calculation behind it, and then here's where we are, X percent of that. Just to help educate folks what, what, what the ceiling is, what it's determined by, where we are in the range, and then that's something that helps educate folks, because I think we, most people touching this have are not comfortable with the subject matter. They take a lot on faith by us as elected officials representing something is true. And they should, because that's the role we're put in. But it's also helpful to have the document describe it in a way that um, kind of uses layman's terms wherever you can. I realize with DESE and, uh, and uh, uh, our own charter, you have to describe it in a certain ways, but to the extent you can describe it as another expense, and that expense goes to the operating fund, and the, you know, the maximum a fee can cover is the actual cost, here's an assessment of our actual cost. I don't know if that's possible or even, um, is it too much work for not, a lot, for not a lot of gain, but I do think it would help with the comprehension problem. Because I know, I, I, that's one of the questions I get asked all the time, what, what is this thing called an offset, and why are we being charged it? Thank you. No, you're all set. <laughs> um, back, just back to, to Carl's point for a second, and, and Barry's and John's also. Um, so we, FinCom um, just asked for a document that I'm sure we'll, we'll share with you guys that shows since fiscal 14 what the contributions are from RMLD, um, including um, some of the things that the town does to support the operations there. So, you know, I think this is a very important topic. The, the point I want to make is that I don't think that the RMLD is the panacea to the town's problems and the operating budget problems. Mm -hmm. I think there could be some changes made that could be significant and helpful, but where we are as a town, we are going to need to support an override in order to get some of the things that we're expecting in the near term. And I don't see any other option to that. Regarding RMLD, I think there's two things that are important to note. One, we do receive reduced rates for utilities because this is uh, municipally owned. Uh, so we would see, while we would gain whatever amount for selling this asset, we would see a corresponding increase in our utility rates. Um, the other thing is that there are 40 other municipally owned utilities in the state. Um, none of them have ever sold them. So it would be wise to investigate beyond Reading's borders as to why these assets are never sold and remain under municipal control for consideration once we um, reach that point. Also, looking at the value of RMLD, I'm not sure whether the 109 million is the gross assets, net assets, um, what that is, but um, I don't believe that's the equity of uh, RMLD. Um, and if it produces a stream of, say, $5 million of income, um, and we get 2.5 million of that, um, a stream of $5 million of income is worth a lot less than that if we were to sell the company because. Um, a utility would have to pay tax on that. They'd only get a return of, say, um, five million, three, three million two or something like that. Um, and you multiply that, uh, they get a 20% return, three million two, that's under $20 million that they'd be willing to pay for the asset. Uh, and those are very off the cuff, but uh, okay. yeah. Um. 
With all due respect, have you looked at their financial report? Um, I did. I okay. Did so you see that assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. I'm an accountant. Sorry. So that's yeah, it's a, the actual net assets are 109 million. Um, it, and it, this is not at all meant to be confrontational, whatsoever the case may be. Um, in terms of if you look at um, Vanessa, and, and that's a great point that you brought up in terms of um, discounted electric, electrical rates. However, the for-profit electric rates, uh, I don't know if you saw it the other day, the uh, Attorney General is actually making, because of the tax cuts that are going through, actually have to reduce their, their charges. But if you look at, from a very macro standpoint, the average electric bill, $100 a month, thereabouts. If we were even paying 5% more, that'd be $5 a month, $60 a year, as opposed to our property taxes going up $500. I'll pay 50 or $60 more than 500 to get the same, same amount of, on, from that aspect of it, okay? That, I guess, that's just me being there. When you look at in terms of return on investment, what you need to, okay. Yeah, I mean the balance sheet is um, unrestricted cash, $15 million, meaning free there. There's also what's called EBITDA earnings for interest, tax depreciation, amortization. So even when they're making $5 million that's there, they're, they're also taking a deduction out for um, depreciation on the capital assets. So the actual cash on cash is more than that. So the net assets are 109. If you're in business world, I'm assuming, if you have a monopoly of 20 years, if you're a venture capital company coming in, you'd pay a premium for that, right? Think of whatever business you're in, and I don't know what business you're in, if you're the only person that the person can get your supplies from, you'd pay a lot of money for that, okay? The town managers told me it's over $200 million it's worth. I'm not saying the fact that we should liquidate it whatsoever, and please don't misunderstand. What I'm saying to you, if you look at the time value of money, that $2 million that was agreed to 20 years ago, $2 million today versus what it was 20 years ago is probably worth about 1.2 of real true dollar value. In terms of Barry mentioned, our, our fees are going up five and a half ish percent a year between taxes and the whole nine years. We're getting 0.4. And I know it's tied to the CPI index, it's outdated system, there's no doubt about that. All I'm saying to you is, to the community I should say, if it's if we're paying our property taxes 2.5%, it should be going up 2.5%. I understand Mr. Enzeminger has been working diligently for the past 10 months to get one meeting. You guys make meetings every other week, right? If you really want to get something done, you can get it done if your main interest is taking care of the children and the police, fire, and town of the town of Reading. And I don't mean to uh, hijack your meeting. I know you're talking about and Dr. Darty sitting there going, we need to take, take care of the school budget and, and I, I'm going to stop talking there. But when people make comments out there saying what it's worth, I just respectfully disagree that when you're looking at your calculations, it, that it's not the case. We need to get a true professional VC type of company or even the town manager was in the, that market privately before he became a town manager. I don't know why he did that, but he decided to, to, to get into the town manager world. <laughs> it, it's worth a substantial amount of money, okay? And one last thing, people said, you know, we do get discounted electric rates, fine. We used to own our own water department too, right? And went to M MWRA, and the end of the world didn't happen. I turn on my faucet, the water comes out, okay? So don't be afraid to go to the private sector versus which we did on the water side for the electric side. If it does save children's teachers, police and fire, et cetera. So I'm done, I apologize for, for going on in a tangent. It's just something that's bugged me because we've been dealing with it for years. I've listened to the same rhetoric and we got an increase of $14,000. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments on the school committee budget? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, as far as other items of business, we have um, our minutes from previous meetings. I was suggesting that uh, people take a look at them and we'll vote on them tomorrow night. That's uh, agreeable with everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, finish up really tight. Um, we're at the town hall tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so we're at town hall tomorrow. <laughs> Everybody's in the conference room. 7.30. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed?